basement and ministry house here. Notice anything different? Um, I am uh, got less hair, still got the ponytail, but um, not as long as it was. And um, I kind of have this feeling, I haven't got a direct word, but I kind of have a feeling that my ponytail days may be coming to an end soon. Um, I don't know about forever, but at least at the moment, I don't know. Anyway, um, Brother Bill in Oregon uh, called with a concern about a video he had seen on YouTube saying that uh, March 9th, 2016 was going to be the beginning of an air war and China and Russia were going to crush the United States and the Great Tribulation was going to start and would have 1260 days uh, and so on um, until the end from that point going forward. And um, uh, I don't particularly want to mention the video that he watched. I'm sure there's others out there saying all kinds of stuff. There's been several that have come and gone that I took a stand and said, no, nothing's going to happen on that day. We're not getting raptured on that day. Whatever's not going to happen on that day. There's not going to be martial law on that day. And uh, uh, so far, <laughs> I've been right on all of them. And uh, as much as I want the Lord Jesus to come back, and as much as I want this ride to be over, I'm going to have to go on record again and say March 9th. Uh, there's not going to be an air war. And um, I'm not saying that there won't be ever. I'm uh, not sure how America goes down exactly. Uh, it says in the Bible that she's destroyed in a day. The Babylon, which... I'm taken to mean by the description in Revelation 18 the United States that she's destroyed in a day and no one ever lives in her again. Well, that doesn't look like a prolonged war. Uh, even with nukes, that doesn't keep her from being inhabited somewhere. And um, the particular video... Um, in question, the particular brother in question also says that he's one of the two witnesses and that he'll prophesy in Jerusalem and be beheaded and uh, raised again in three and a half days and so on. And I get a big no on that too. Um, not because I have any particular information on who it's going to be, but... And I'm perfectly okay with the idea that God wants me to learn more humility and prove that I'm wrong so that I can eat crow and uh, be humbled uh, with whoever else. But I'm still going to go with no. And um, I think more underneath it all was a fear like what 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 am I gonna do? And so I guess this video I would rather address that than any specific date setting or any specific warning or whatever. I guess it comes down to when somebody says such and such is the day that whatever. A tsunami is going to hit the East Coast. Uh, the country is going to get nuked. The this or that or whatever. Uh, does the Lord want me to panic? Well, that should be a fairly simple thing to solve. No, the Lord does not want you to panic under any circumstance. Fear is a spirit and it's not from the Lord. We're not talking about any of these things so that people can panic 
you should be right with the Lord already. You should have done everything you can to get your loved ones ready or relying on the promises of God about your loved ones that somehow he'll finish what he started and get something done. You should have done whatever preparation the Lord's already told you to do internally, first of all, and externally, second of all. Um, I know this doesn't fit me. This is a huge, ginormous, <laughs> way bigger than me thing here, but it's comfy, and it was donated, and it's warm. So anyway, uh, I want to... I guess it doesn't hurt to have this in as many videos as possible. But I've mentioned it in a couple of videos before. A sister that was here a long time ago, a while ago, um, had a vision about two little kids. A little boy and a little girl. And they were eight or so years old. And in this scene where everything was post-apocalyptic, Terminator, death, uh, watch the day after, watch uh, the, the British one. With the spider web. I forget the name of it. I'll look it up and put it in here. Um, that are, anyway, total wasteland. People killing each other for a can of beans. Everybody's gray. Everybody's bleeding. There's no hope. Everybody's despairing. And in the midst of it, there are these two little kids in bright outfits. Not a piece of dirt on them. Not a scratch on them. Smiling and singing and dancing their way through the middle of the streets twirling and laughing and nobody understands some people instantly resent them how dare they be happy when everybody's going through this and want to hurt them or stop them or bring them down to their level and you can't you can't touch them you can't hurt them you look in your in their eyes you know they're a thousand years old and they scare you some people are attracted to them and want to know wh why. How can you sing? How can you be happy? How can you rejoice? And they lead people like the Pied Piper in a train down through these woods into a valley of safety where people are living together and sharing resources and everything's okay and people are fed and it's green and colorful and, and life is okay. And then the little kids go back up the secret trail out, out through the woods, back up into the wasteland, and um, lead people down this trail that only they can find. And the interpretation was that this is the bride and the man-child. This is what the bride is supposed to be in the last days. That she should be singing and rejoicing and happy and unstoppable no matter what happens, no matter what harm, no matter what risk, no matter what whatever, just full of joy and rejoicing and shocking the world. So, so out of context, so not like the world that it shocks people. And they want to know, why is this so attractive and how do I get some? And we are supposed to be that. We are supposed to be twirling. We are supposed to be, while everything is falling around us, while people sitting in pews are lynching pastors that lied to them about a pre-trib rapture, while, people are, while pastors are being taken out back and beaten because they said God wanted a new gym, God wanted a chandelier, God wanted a new building, and people realize this is not what God wanted, we gave you this money, and now we're poor, we're hungry, we're desperate, and you're not here for us. You didn't, you didn't prepare, you didn't anything. In the midst of churchianity melting, in the midst of society melting, there are the real Christians, the true remnant, the true Israel, that dances and spins and, and, and joyfully leads them to a place of safety and community and love and rest. So, uh, Brother Bill and anybody else out there, uh, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. 
and uh, up until the end. And that doesn't mean it's the real thing. And even when it is the real thing, even when somebody really believable, me or somebody else, whoever you trust and think is hearing God, or God himself says, next Thursday, duck. Even then, <laughs> your job is not to be afraid. Your job is to rejoice. To believe that though a thousand fall at your left hand and ten thousand fall at your right hand, you will be protected. And even if you're not protected, go read Daniel chapter 3. The, the, the children of Israel thrown in the fiery furnace. Our God will save us. And even if our God doesn't save us, we're still not bowing to you. They stood in the fiery furnace, heated up seven times more than normal. Fire so hot, the guys that threw them in died. Then they heated up even more, and people nearby died. And they walked around. It says, like, a, like, like it was a cool breeze and the mist coming off the grass. <laughs> their clothes didn't smell of smoke. Not a hair on their head was singed. And Nebuchadnezzar says, hey, come on out of there. Because he threw in three and he saw four. And the angel of the Lord was with him. So they walk out. No harm, no foul. It's all good. Are we good now? Did we prove our point now? Are you going to worship our God now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Tell everybody, the whole empire, th these guys' as God is the God. Yeah. That's what we said. Should have listened. Daniel in the lion's den. Plenty of examples. That's the kind of faith you're going to need to have. And I would instantly start practicing rebuking any voice that tells you to be afraid. Um, there will be people die. There will be people you see starve to death in front of you. There will be all kinds of horrible things. And um, you're still going to have to rejoice. Or you will lose your mind. And the angrier the enemy gets, the more we rejoice. Because we're getting under their skin. The more they huff and puff, the more they make a fuss, the more we rejoice. And we know that our God's got it. it. May not work the way you think, may not look the way you think. His ways are not our ways. But he's good and he's just. And he knows what he's doing. And it's our job to show the world that we have figured that out. And they need to figure it out, too. Anyway, um, man, I guess I'd be happy to be wrong uh, if the brother's right and we're going to have a major meltdown. He's saying March 9th or very soon after. But he's not leaving a lot of leeway for it to develop over time. But that, that will be the beginning of the Great Tribulation. The American dollar will melt down. Uh, there'll be a war for air superiority, and uh, we'll lose and be overwhelmed by the Russians and the Chinese and yada yada. And I'm not feeling it. January of last year, of uh, 15, Lord says the next three years are critical. I took that to mean that I have three years to get in place all the things that he's told me we need to get in place. Some of which are not even close to being in place. Some of which will take a year or more to get in place. And I took that to mean that we have a three-year window, of which a year is used up, uh, to um, move around fairly freely and to get established the things that we need to get established. I could have misinterpreted it wrong, but either way, it doesn't jive with this March 9th thing. Um, so I'm going to go with March 9th. I'll pass like the other dates have passed fairly quietly. And it's not that existentially there might not be some snap in the spirit that starts something, 
Um, I think something happened at the Feast of Tabernacles this last year. But it wasn't anything that was obvious to the world uh, in any way that I can figure out. Even if spiritually something launched, we might not see it for a long time, you know. Daniel prayed, and it was 21 days later before the angel came with the answer because he was held up. So, uh, I don't pretend to understand the Lord in every way that the mechanics of the kingdom work, but I'm going to go with a no on this uh, March 9th, and I'm going to go with a big giant no on be afraid, be very afraid. No. If you ever pray... And Jesus says, okay, now is the time to panic. You didn't hear God. <laughs> He's just not going to tell you that, ever. He may say, now's the time to run. He's, he may say, duck. But he's not going to say, panic. It's out of control. I have no idea what's going to happen next. You're on your own. We're out of here. <laughs> or whatever. He may say, don't go back for your coat, just hit the for, head for the hills. But he's not going to say, do it with fear. Ever. Anyway, I hope that's some encouragement to some folks out there. I've got lots of videos about rejoicing and commands to rejoice. I really encourage you, go to the channel, FOTM1. Go to the little magnifying glass that searches our channel, type in rejoice, and watch all the videos about rejoicing and the need to rejoice, the command to rejoice, the urgency of rejoicing. There's nothing more important that's going to get you through all of this than cultivating in yourself, farming, growing, husbanding in yourself a, a, a natural, constant attitude of rejoicing. Because that will disable everything the enemy's going to try and do. Um, best friend died. Rejoice. They don't have to go through this. Kids died. Rejoice. They don't have to go through this. Uh, you know, the dollar crash. Rejoice. We're going to get tested. We're going to get to see how we've learned, how, what we've put in place, and how self-sufficient we can really be. And how much the Lord's going to provide for us. Great. Uh, you know... Whatever, two witnesses die. Rejoice. That means he's coming any minute now. Uh, great. We're almost there. Okay. You know, there, there's, you know, whatever. Accidentally cut my arm off with a saw. Rejoice. I, I don't exactly get it, but it, God says all things work to the good of them that loves Lord, love the Lord, so rejoice. Somehow, you know, that part of you went to heaven sooner. Whatever. <laughs> rejoice. Uh It's a command, not an option. Uh, and it's just as real and just as important, maybe more so, than don't look at porn, love your neighbor, you know, don't cheat on your wife. Well, it's ju just as important, maybe more, because it does real warfare and it disables all kinds of demons. Loneliness, despair, fear, uh, addiction of all kinds, everything is disabled by just rejoicing and uh, uh, unforgiveness, resentment, everything falls away. So, part of, part of my problem, I guess, I, I guess the simplicity of it is I just ask the Lord, Lord, March 9, no. Okay. But then I go and try and go, okay, well, why not? Well, we're nowhere, we're nowhere close to a bride without wrinkle or spot. I'm not sure we've, we're even close to a first fruits harvest of a bride that's without wrinkle or spot. And that's a constant source of uh, frustration slash rejoicing. <laughs> for me, year after year. But, um, yeah. I think there's all kinds of reasons why 
not right this minute. A lot of stuff isn't in place. A lot of stuff isn't ready to go. A lot of people aren't ready to launch. Um, and I think we do have some more time to get stuff in place. Now, it could all go real, real, real fast if the Christians in this country really got it all of a sudden. There are enough millionaires and billionaires and whatever going to church that could say, okay, who's got this figured out? Who who has been calling this ahead of time and knows what it's going to take to get us through this? Here's some money. Let's get it done. A whole bunch of stuff could change real fast. But it's going to require unity. and It's going to require trust and love and a, a, a lack of desire to fight about theology that we don't have yet. I just don't see it out there not on a scale sufficient to uh, say that, that the love uh, within the bride has uh, bloomed. Anyway, sadly, uh, that's all for now. God bless you. Uh, thanks for the question. I'm going to try and respond to some other stuff. Uh, I don't know about tonight. It's already 1230, but I'm going to try and get some other videos out pretty soon. We've got... Uh, Sister asked a question about head coverings. I haven't had a chance to answer the email because I wanted to do a video, but I haven't had time to do the video. But I am going to answer your question, and we're going to do that. Uh, hopefully the next video I put out will be an answer to the question about women and head coverings. Um, and then some other stuff we need to talk about, too, that I think will edify you and grow you. And... Um, anyway... Uh, there's a website I want to recommend to you, a YouTube channel, a um, um, couple in Oregon, I believe, that um, I've been following their channel a little while. They're homesteaders, Christian homesteaders. The YouTube channel is Wrangler Star, uh, and um, uh, they're doing a Bible series uh, on through all of the books of the Bible about what each book says about God. And uh, I think it's pretty cool. Him and his wife are sweet as they can be. And I don't know if I'll ever get a chance to go out there and hug them or if they particularly want to hug me back. I don't even know. I haven't talked to him. have never conversed with him. But um, I see the light of Christ in him, and I'm proud of him and glad that they're out there on YouTube saying good stuff. And um, I'd encourage you, when you get a chance, to check out their channel and subscribe. He's got a gazillion more subscribers than I do. And um, I think YouTube is a big part of what they do because it's helping pay the bills and um, so they can focus on YouTube. For the sake of transparency, we are, at the ad revenue on the size that we are, we get somewhere around $150 to $180 a month from the ads running across the little border. I don't want to do the ads in the middle of the video that interrupt the video. That's... I can't get comfortable with that. But the little thing at the bottom, you know, you can click on it and make it go away. We make more money if you don't click on it and make it go away, if you just put up with it. Uh, or if you do click on them once in a while and go see what they have, even if you just click right away, we make more money that way too. But if you let the video run or just start a playlist when you go to bed at night and let it run all night, uh, then the ad revenue racks up. But anyway... Right now, we're about $150 to $200 a month on average um, at the size that we are with about 12,000 subscribers. But uh, I think Wrangler stars 20, 30 times that, something like that. And um, uh, so they're probably doing enough ad revenue to really be able to just focus on that. And, uh, um, and they're using it to, to preach the gospel. And... Uh, educate people on other things along the way. So it's a good homesteading channel, but uh, I think you might like their Bible studies. Um, I haven't had time for a, just a, a sit-down, regular, every Wednesday night expository Bible study where we go through uh, a book or something like that. And there's lots of that out there. Um, I don't feel like that's necessarily... A, 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 a hole in the market that I'm supposed to fill. I know what I'm for, and it's for city church, it's for calling for repentance, it's for calling the body to get outside of their boxes and walls and be one. And um, 
we have a lot of Bible study videos. We have a lot of, uh, as the Lord leads on a particular passage or whatever. But um, I think at this moment anyway, I'm for sort of something different. And so I'm grateful that they're filling that niche. niche and uh, you might check out their channel. Anyway, uh, God bless y'all. And um, never fear. Never fear. And um, we're going to get through this together. And in the end, it's going to be beautiful. God bless you all. I rebuke the spirit of fear on anybody out there. Despair, terror, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus. You have faith and you stand in your inheritance and who you are in Christ. And know that he's got your back in the name of Jesus. I command you to stand in the name of Jesus. Amen.